Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today, we are diving into an exciting project that blends everyday security with the power of DIY electronics. We are going to build a sophisticated and highly secure smart door lock system using an Arduino and a rotary encoder. This isn't just a basic lock. By the end of this video, you will have a fully functional system featuring a crisp OLED display, password masking for privacy, an unbreakable master password, auditory feedback with a buzzer, and even a security lockout mode to thwart any unauthorized attempts to access your space. It's a fantastic project that's both practical and a great learning experience. So let's get started. Now, let's talk about the parts we need for this project. First, the main component is the Arduino Nano. This is the brain which will control everything. To enter the password, we will use a rotary encoder module. You can turn its knob to change the numbers and press the button to move to the next digit. For the display, we will use a 0.96 inch OLED screen. This will show us messages like enter password or unlocked. To lock and unlock the door, we need a servo motor. For sound, we will use a small buzzer to give beeps. And for opening the door from inside, we will add a simple push button. Finally, we will connect all these components together in the Wakwi Online Simulator. All right, now that we have all our components, let's discuss the connections. I will explain everything step by step so you can follow along easily. First is our OLED display. It has four pins. Connect VCC to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, GND to the ground pin, SCL to pin A5, and SDA to pin A4. Next is the rotary encoder. Connect its CLK pin to digital pin D4 on the Arduino, the DT pin to D5, and the SW, or switch pin, to D6. Also, connect its VCC and ground pins to the 5 volt and ground pins on the Arduino, respectively. Now for the servo motor. Connect its control signal wire to digital pin D7 on the Arduino. Also, connect the servo's VCC and ground to the 5 volt and ground pins. Remember, if your servo needs more current than the Arduino can supply, use an external power source for the servo's VCC and connect the grounds together. Let's connect the buzzer. The longer leg, which is the positive one, goes to digital pin D8, and the shorter, negative leg goes to ground. Finally, the inside exit button. Connect one of its legs to digital pin D9, and the other leg to a ground pin on the Arduino. And that's it. All our connections are now complete. With the circuit ready in the simulator, we can now move on to the most important part. The code. Now we come to the most important part of our project. The code. Don't worry, I will explain it in a very simple way. First, at the top of our code, we include the necessary libraries. These are like pre-written code packages that help us easily control the OLED display and save data to the EEPROM, which is the Arduino's internal memory. Next, we define all the pins that our components are connected to, like the encoder, servo, and buzzer. We also set up variables to store the password, the master password, and to keep track of failed attempts for our security lock feature. Then we have the setup function. This function runs only once when the Arduino first turns on. Inside setup, we initialize the OLED display, set the pin modes for all our components, and most importantly, we load the saved password from the EEPROM. If it's the first time running the code, it saves the default password, which is 1234. After the setup, we have the loop function. This function runs again and again, forever. Inside the loop, our code continuously does two main things. It checks if you are turning the rotary encoder to enter a digit, and it checks if you have pressed the button on the encoder or the inside exit button. It also handles the security lockout timer if the system is blocked. Finally, we have several smaller helper functions. These functions handle specific tasks like updating the text on the OLED display, checking if the entered password is correct, saving a new password to the EEPROM, and making the buzzer beep. By breaking the code into smaller functions, it becomes much easier to read and manage. And that is a basic overview of how our code works. It's a complete system that handles input, output, security, and memory all together. Okay, so with our circuit and code ready, let's see the working demo in the Wakwi simulator. As you can see, the OLED display first shows enter password. I will now turn the rotary encoder to enter our defos word, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. After each digit, I will press the encoder's button to move to the next one. 
There, the password is correct and you can see the unlocked message. The servo motor also turns 90 degrees, which would unlock the door in a real circuit. Now let's try an incorrect password. I will enter 1111. See? It shows failed. If I do this three times, the system will enter security lockout mode. Let me show you. After the third wrong attempt, the screen shows locked out and a timer starts. During this time, the system will not accept any input from the encoder. Next, let's see how to change the password. I will long press the encoder button for two seconds. The screen now asks for the old password. I will enter one, two, three, four. Now it asks for the new password. Let's set it to four, three, two, one, and it shows saved. The new password is now stored permanently. What if you forget your password? We have a master password for that, which is 9999. Let's try it. And it works. The door is unlocked. Finally, this is the inside exit button. No matter what is on the screen, even if it is locked out, pressing this button will always unlock the door for a safe exit. So as you can see, our project is working perfectly with all its security features. So that was our complete DIY smart door lock project. As you saw, it is not only functional, but also packed with advanced security features, making it a very practical and useful device for your home or office. I hope you found this video helpful and easy to follow. All the code and the circuit diagram used in this project will be available in the description below so you can build this yourself. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on more exciting projects like this one. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye and happy building.